and it's Lolly at Lollipop Stitches. It is the 2nd of April and we're here with episode 3 of Floss Tube season 2024. <laughs> I've tried to record this, I shit you not, about five times now and I have no idea what I'm doing and it's only been like a month and a half because I didn't record in March like I should have and if I don't record it in March like I should have then it wouldn't have taken me like five times to get this video started. It's okay. We're all okay here. We're fine. Welcome. <laughs> so if you're new here, this is a video um, about cross stitching um, in our little crafty corner of YouTube. And uh, sometimes, historically, there has been some updates about quilting. Maybe at some point knitting, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so thank you. Um, I believe I had an influx of like new subscribers so hi welcome to this little corner of mess that is going to be today's floss tube. <laughs> oh, help me now. Um, so what we're going to go through is uh, new starts, works in progress um, that I've stitched on, finished objects so stitches that I finished or projects that I finished I have one FFO but I'm not taking it off the wall because I can't and I did a separate video for it however that's now changed because I didn't finish it exactly like I did in the video so okay I think I put a post mm, no I don't think I did actually um this is gonna be hectic um I've got some haul which I don't generally share haul but like I've got some haul um and yeah we'll see how it goes we'll just see how it goes because <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing anymore it's fine we're all fine here um so since the last video I think the last video was the middle of Feb so this video is going to cover middle of well the end of Feb and March stitching which is why I'm getting really confused or why I was getting really confused when I was recording like three four times ago um because I thought I had sorted myself out and made a note of everything I had not there was some stuff that was missing which is fine um so yeah so we're just gonna go through it just gonna go through it. uh life updates not much has been going on I say not much has been going on um I went away for a week a long weekend at the beginning of March went to the East Anglia yarn festival um which was good, got some yarn and a pattern and a couple of other things. Um, I'm not going to show those because I haven't done anything with them. It's great. Um, I think this is just going to be primarily stitching <laughs> updates, which is fine. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go through finishes first, then whips and new starts. Although some of the finishes were new starts, but I'll give you that information when we go through it um i think that's it so let's just go through it shall we because i feel like i'm a hot mess so, so the first um project that i finished is um luna love from Sprouting Lupine. So I started this in February for Pink February Stitching um, and I finished it at the end of February. In total, I think I spent, um, I think it was 18 days worth of stitching with an average of like 420 stitches a day. Average. There were some days where I did way more than that and some days where I did not. <laughs> um, so mostly the cool four colours. I substituted a couple of colours for Roxy Floss Co. pinks that I had on hand that I thought I'd use. Um, but I think the substitutions that I made worked out really well. Um, the fabric that this is on is 40 count uh, jungle from Fox and Rabbit. I think this was a fabric of the month from like last year, year before, not sure. Um, 
and it's 40 count linen. Did I say 40 count? I think I said 40 count. Uh, and it's stitched one over two. So that is that. And I tackled this like motif by motif, which worked wonders. Um, so yeah, I put my initials and the year and it was all done, which is great. I love stitching on that. Sprout and Lupine have got some really nice um, patterns. Um, and I th think she just released a new video on them, maybe. I don't know. Um, maybe. <laughs> so then the next finish um, is also a Sprout and Lupine pattern. pattern. Um, and this was a whip lace side last year in September. I didn't stitch a lot on it at all. Um, so... Because of Notion and the data that you put into Notion, um, there's a lot of stuff you can do um, with Stitchy Natty's template, uh, which I'll link below if I remember. Um, I will remember, but just make sure you link it below. Um, that was to me. Um, so yeah, so when I finished that and I realised how many stitches a day I needed to get to stitch on to get it done. I actually finished that a day earlier because I wanted because it was leap year. And I said I'll give myself to the end of February. So I had to do some data analytical work with the help of Pattern Keeper, Notion, and Maths. <laughs> so I was just like on average, um I think I gave myself like a week. Um not a week, sorry. I calculated it to the end of the month um, that I need to stitch however many stitches a day to get it finished. Um, I didn't make a note of that, so I can't tell you what that was. But <laughs> I finished a day early because there was 29 days in February this year, which was great. So then I looked at what other whips I had in progress that were like not far off a of finish, but not too big. That I wouldn't be able to finish them when I got to doing some uh, data analytical work uh, with the help of Notion and Pattern Keeper and the next project was a finish <laughs> um, so the next project was uh, again sprouting lupine like a moth to a flame um, I added the A because it's just like a moth to flame um, that's what the pattern is so all the cord four colours, this fabric is pine bark from Fox and Rabbit and it was uh, a fabric of the month, I believe. Again, at some point, last year maybe. Um, so I gave myself like a week at the end of February to do this before my week, my, my like long weekend away. Um, to the East Anglia Yarn Festival, I was just like, I'm giving myself a week. On average, I need to stitch 450, maybe it was like 477 stitches a day from Feb 29th. I needed to stitch 477 stitches a day to get this finished before I went away for the long weekend at the beginning of March. So I hunkered down and... Uh, did that <laughs> obviously because it's a finish um i used the call called for what i affectionately now know as satan's pubes because this stuff is fucking horrendous to work with um and it's just for the moth's body so um i stitched this is 40 count so i was stitching one over two anyway so i stitched the body well part of it with this bottom and top legs. And then I think I mentioned it in the last video that um, I saw, I can't remember where it was or who, who suggested it, um, to stitch the bottom leg of your cross in a matching DMC colour. Oh, I don't know if you heard that, that was Albus. She's asleep. Um, yeah, she's asleep. Um, to stitch the bottom leg of the X in a matching DMC colour and the top leg using the whisper thread. So I did that. 
and then I use one of my trusty like Lego cleaners to fluff it up. Um, and then I didn't like how lack of fluffy it looked with just the top X's because it was pulled um, through the fabric. So not a lot of the fluff was actually sitting on top. So then Diana, the wonderful It Is Kids Knit Stitches, um, she suggested to do long stitches across the body of the moth and then fluff it up, which added a bit more fluff to it that you probably can't really see. Um, so I feel like that's added a bit more and I'm happy, I was happy with how that turned out then. Um, so yeah, that's like a moth to a flame. Um, this is actually going off to be a relative's birthday present because they commented it, commented on it on Facebook and their sister was just like, can you do that for so-and-so's birthday present? It's like, yeah, sure. So that is going off to be rehomed and framed. I've got a frame, I just need to frame it and um, send it. So. Uh, that was that. So then the next whip, uh, sorry, next finish I took with me for the weekend away that I went to. Um, I wanted something small um, that I'd started that it would be a quick turnaround to get it finished. Um, so I picked up um, this next project which is Ghost Family Crest by the Witchy Stitcher. Um, this was a Patreon chart and I don't know if it's in her shop yet but I think this was released like last year to her Patreon members so it might be a while before it comes into her shop sorry <laughs> but that's why you become a Patreon member of uh, your favourite designers um, so then I figured out not figured out did my um, data analytical work and figured out that I needed to stitch, that I could stitch this in the long weekend that I was away because there wasn't, uh, so there wasn't that many stitches. It was only like, the stitch count is 2,380 stitches, which when you actually think about it is a lot of stitches, but like it's quite small. Um, so I was just like, oh, well, I can do that because on average for these projects, I was doing like 500 stitches a day. So I knew at that point how many stitches I could stitch a day between like 9 p.m. and 11 p.m. Like I knew what my daily nighttime stitching limit was um, and what I could stitch on. So I thought, well, if I take this away with me for the long weekend, I know the Thursday night, Friday, Saturday I wasn't really doing anything. We were just chilling out and watching films. And then Sunday was the yarn festival. So I knew I could get this done because I hunkered down. Um, so this is the same fabric as like a moth to a flame. Um, so this is Pine Bark from Fox and Rabbit. And this is Witchy Stitcher's Ghost Family Crest. And it's just in Ecru, I think. Maybe B5200 and DMC310. Or, well, I don't use DMC310. I use Anchor 403. Um, so yeah, that was that. That only took me three days to finish. And I think on one day, I stitched like 1,000 stitches. And I think that was the day we didn't move. We just ordered food and watched movies and stitched. <laughs> Which was great. Um, so yeah, so that was a finish. Um, so then the next product, this was a start on that weekend that I went away. And then a finish a week later only took me seven days to stitch it. So then this project is um, Michelle Bendy's or Bendy Stitchy Designs and um, Pirate Quaker that was in the Starlight Stitchery um, Pirate Box. Um, I didn't use the called for fabric because I think it was 32 count. 
And when I started it on that fabric, I was just like, whoa, these stitches look massive. Because I'm used to, mostly now, 40 count, stitching one over two, which is quite small. So I was just like, oh no. And I didn't have, um, so I started it on that fabric and I was just like, I don't think I can do this. I'm going to work on something else that I took with me, another whip. So then when I got home, I was just like, I needed to look at what fabric I had to stitch this on. So I had this um, 36 can autumn linen from Under the Seas fabric and it's opalescent fabric. Um, Why can't I hold this properly? <laughs> Guys, what's going on? Um, so this is Michelle Bendy's Pirate Quaker. And I used the cold for floss that came in the box, uh, which was Forbidden Fibre Floss. Uh, five Forbidden Fibre. Forbidden Fibre Floss. Hand dyed threads. <laughs> and this was the stitch count was 2,909 stitches so I literally was stitching on average like um 400 ish stitches a day um in order to get it done and I tell you like I tackled this um kind of colour by colour but then also motif by motif um so that is that finish and I love it like, I love the fact that she took a sampler and made it pirate because it spoke to me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and a little rat at the bottom. Love him. Um, so that was that finish. And then I got uh, another whip um, that I'd started that was not far off a finish, actually, because it wasn't that much stitching. Um, so this one um, is called I Want to Believe. I think I showed this in the whip parade. Well, I must have shown it in the whip parade because it was a whip. Um, and I didn't have that much done. So this is called I Want to Believe and the designer is Cross Stitch Foxy. Um, so I started this last July and I didn't do a lot at all. Um, this fabric is marbled sampler green from XJU Designs, I believe, um, and it's just in uh, black thread, so anchor 403, and then I did the rays from the UFO in Etoile, DMC Etoile, I can't remember what colour, I didn't make a note of that, one of the greens, um, and this took a total of five days to finish. Well, to stitch really. Um, I stitched on it four days this year. So four days in March to get this finished. And it was actually quite an easy stitch. So yeah, so that was that finish. Um, so the other whip that I worked on um, whilst I was away at my long weekend. If I can open the bag. Um, is Quiltified Designs All Souls via London. So I'm doing this on Coffee Craft Fabric Linen 40 count, which is uh, it was just one of those her Super Sunday like sale ones. Um, and I think I've shown I've definitely shown this for us. This is um. Um, grouchy floss from oh, that's not gonna work. definitely think it's grouchy floss from Roxy Flosco and it's just like this really nice green colour super nice green these uh, floss holders are from Kate Blanford sounds about right um, in the UK 
and why is there not a needle in here? Did I use it for something else? Oh god. Oh well, could be missing a needle, could not. Um, and you can't really like see, like this is terrible to autograph. Autograph? No. This is terrible to photograph and like get true like representation of the floss on the fabric. It's, God, it's horrendous to try and photograph anyway. But I think I stitched this motif down here and maybe finished off this. Oh, I think I did the owl as well. And these letters in the middle, I can't remember. Um, but I stitched on this for a couple of days. Uh, or maybe just the afternoon of the, the one day. To get some progress on that. That's not one that I'm like aching to get finished. I'm just enjoying stitching on that. Um, so this will be coming to Stitch North with me because it's just one colour. <laughs> it's just one colour. Um, I have started... Um, my small for stitch north on this picture this plus um huntress fabric but not much of a start so i'm not showing it okay i think that's everything and then i had one new start yes that i'm still stitching on so this is an incredible pattern legitimately legitimately the most incredible pattern i've ever seen in my entire life um and it's a new designer to you and i and it's boomerang stitches so um amity of hathaway stitches goes under the designer name of boomerang stitches yes um and she released two patterns like two weeks ago and uh one of them is called a great white christmas and i believe she did show it in her their sorry their whip parade um on boss tube because she stitched she designed and stitched it for herself um i don't know i don't know she released it i saw it i brought it um, couldn't help myself so this is a great white Christmas and uh, yeah I mean I don't even know what else you can say about it except it's absolutely an, an incredible pattern I'll put a picture in so you know what I'm talking about or I've already put a picture in so you know what I'm talking about um, there is a stitch along for this, so if you are stitching this and you want to join in, it's hashtag Santa Draws Sell. <laughs> um, I love a good pun. Um, so yeah, started this on March 21st. A um, couple of other people are stitching along with this, so cross stitch uh, the globe, cross stitch the globe stitch across the globe oh my god my brain is not functioning um and then one of the hathaway stitches the other sister uh mine has gone blank uh there's also you know, there's a couple of other people there's a group chat you know it's popping it's going um so i need to take this off the key snap to show you the full glory of this fabric so i'm doing it i was going to do it on a a dark blue fabric and then because of the way it's stitched there um the body of the shark that's white would be the blue of the fabric which is not what i wanted and then i thought well i'll stitch it the other way around and then I thought, well, no, that's not going to work either. Maybe I'll just stitch it all in white. And then I was just like, no, because that's more stitches. 
don't want to do that. Um, so, uh, I had a look in the stash because I had been organising my fabric stash and putting it on fabric boards and updating everything in Notion that I had in stash. So I knew what I had. Um, and I was just like, oh, I'm going to do... I'm going to do this on blood splatter fabric that I had, which is called Dracula's Wallpaper. And it was from the Witchy Stitcher, which I think was dyed for the Witchy Stitcher from, or by the Steel, Steel City Steel, I can't talk, Steel City Stitchers, I believe. I'm sure that's what it said on the label. Anyway, so I started it. Um... And that's where I'm at. See, I did. So, because I'm taking this to Stitch North with me because it's a mo monochromatic stitch, it's just one colour. There's a story to this as well. I was just like, what I'll do is I'll outline as much as I can so that when I take it to Stitch North, because it's just one colour, I can just fill in. And I guarantee I won't be stitching a lot at Stitch North because I'm going to be in a different fucking country that I've never been to before. There's going to be a shit ton of people there that I've never met before, that I've wanted to meet for years, that I've known, and that are my closest friends. Like, it's just going to be manic. I'm going to lose my shit every fucking day, and I don't know how I'm going to cope with that. <laughs> like, I can't cope already, and it's like 21 days away. Stand up cope. So... Also, sidebar, if you are going to Stitch North weekend two um, and you see me, kind of not hard to miss, come and say hello to me. I am terrible with names and faces. I'm putting faces to names. <laughs> so if you see me and I've got like, I would say what we call a general British resting bitch face, it's not because like I'm a bitch or anything like that. It's just how it looks. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna be completely overwhelmed, but it's gonna be good overwhelming, like fine. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> However, if you see me, come and say hi. I don't know how like, I don't know, I feel like it's gonna be super overwhelming and it's gonna be exciting, overwhelming. It's going to be fun. I'm going in a couple of days early to do some like touristy shit. Um, so if anybody gets in before the Thursday and wants to know where I am, you can message me on Instagram because I will obviously have my phone with me. Um, obviously. Um, anyway, great white Christmas. So I did the top. I started on here and I actually started filling this in. I was just like, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, which is not which was not my plan. Um I did this border, I've done some snowflakes, and I've outlined the shark, which I'm gonna affectionately call Bruce because I think that's what the animatronic shark was called in Jaws. It was called Bruce. Um so I think the blood, the, the, the blood splatter placement or the stitching placement was absolutely phenomenal because like I've got it so like the, the blood here, the blood splatter effect comes right off the shark's nose and off the shark's teeth. I'm incredible, I know, it's great. Um, so I'm stitching this. <laughs> Here comes the funny story, guys. Don't do this. <laughs> Just don't. So, um, you can see, like, here, I've got a, what Michelle Benny would call a floss monster, a Roxy Flosco floss. Um, there's quite a few colours there, I would say. I was just like, oh, maybe I'll just use, like, a grey from that. Because it's designed in grey. And I was just like, okay. So I had this um, grey and it's called Blustery from Roxy Fosco. Blustery. 
dye, it's grey, it's got some subtle, like it's a grey blue type colour and I thought it's like a perfect shark colour. Yeah, it is. Um, subtle variegation and um, some like, I just think it looks really nice. So I was just like, you know what, I'll use that. Did not even like consider, mistake number one, did not even consider how many stitches <laughs> was in this chart. Or how much thread I would need. Did not even double check that. Didn't even look at it. I was just like, yeah, I'm starting with this floss. So then after a couple of days of stitching, I was just like, hmm. No, it's a fairly decent sized pattern. I wonder how many stitches you get from like a eight yard skein of floss. No, that wasn't the first thing I checked. First thing I checked was Evertote's website to see if this was like a stock colour. It is not. It is not. <laughs> oh, panic set in. So then I started googling how many stitches you can get from a skein of thread. More panic set in because I only have one. And I was just like, oh no. Oh no, what have I done? <laughs> then I messaged Kerry from Roxy Flasco and was just like, just out of curiosity, is this a one off colour or is it a stock colour? Because can't find it on the website, can't find it on Evertotes, and don't think I've got enough floss to do this project. And granted it was like a Sunday, so Kerry, she kindly replied and was just like, she'll check in the, sh the shop um, on Monday and she'll get back to me. But like, she's pretty sure, <laughs> pretty sure it was a one-off. <laughs> oh, more panic scene. And then I was just like, okay, let's, if it's not, it's fine. Because I can just sub it for like another similar colour or I can just, you know, similar DMC colour maybe, or a similar Roxy Flosco colour. And then I was just like, just out of curiosity, do you know how many stitches you can get out of a skein of floss? And she was just like, yeah, like 3,000. I was just like, oh shit. The pattern's like 12,000 stitches. <laughs> and I'm doing it. One over two on 36 counts. So I was just like, maybe I'll have enough. As you can see, I don't have that much left. I do not have enough. I don't have enough. More panic set in. <laughs> and I was just like, okay, I'll, you know, in my mind, I was just like, okay, this is what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to be okay with picking another similar colour or just doing DMC. I'm going to have to be okay with that. Especially if it's not a uh, stock colour. But Kerry was just like, she'll check high and low in the shop to see if there is anything, if there is anything like lying around um, or whatnot. And I was just like, okay, wh whatever, I, I appreciate the response. And like, if she does, can confirm if it is or isn't or what have you, that'd be great. So then the next day she replied saying, um, it's definitely not a stock colour. <laughs> oh, panic. More panic. Um, but she was just like, by the grace of the stitching gods, she found buried deep, deep in the shop, a hank of lustre floss. And I was just like, you're kidding me. You're actually kidding me. That is actually incredible like you're a lifesaver um but there's no rush because i'm coming to stitch north so kerry's a lifesaver that's all we need to say and um if she's not overly awkward about hugs she's going to get the biggest hug at stitch north because she is a lifesaver <laughs> um and then I told Diana about it and she was just like, yeah, 
didn't want to say anything, but like, because you're only posting like one skein of floss in the picture, like, I did worry. <laughs> Diana, always say it. Whatever you're thinking, say it. But thankfully, in this situation, we're going to be okay. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. But, my God. There's one for the year. Storybooks to never do that again. Always check your floss first to make sure, especially if you're using hand dyed floss. I mean, why wouldn't you check it? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Because if you're a fool like me, you wouldn't have. Um, I mean, I can't believe I did that. It was, I, I put it down to the excitement of starting um, the pattern. That's what I'm going to put it down to. Um, which I think was hilarious. Now I think it's hilarious, but on that Sunday when I was messaging Kerry and asking her about it, I was just like, oh my God, what? What have I done? It's fine. But we're all fine. We are all fine here. So I can carry on stitching that. Well, prepping the areas to stitch. Um... And fill. Stitch and fill. Which, you know, we'll see how far we get at Stitch North or how much stitching gets done at Stitch North. Which is why I'm the, actually only taking two projects that are one colour. One easy, like if I prep it, I can fill. And two, I can just stitch. Whatever. Probably won't have much stitching, but I do like getting stitching done. Um, so yeah, that's uh, everything that I've stitched on in the past month and a half. Uh, so I have an FO. This is, I did a video of like an FO with me, FFO, sorry, FFO with me. Um, you can't see it because there's no light behind here, but I'm going to make this into like a gallery wall. So I started, but I've got stuff to frame. I've got some frames for cryptids and supernatural cell, so I need to frame those. Those will go all there. And so yeah, I'm making this into like a little gallery stitch wall. Um, yeah, I have some haul. Um, so first things first. Uh, Nashville needlework market haul. So Nashville releases. Um, I find it really difficult being in the UK actually getting shops. There are some UK shops that do go to Nashville needlework market and um, I'd say the past two years I've put in pre-orders with shops and never heard anything from them and to me it's really really annoying because like I'm you're going out there to support the industry and I'm placing a pre-order with you via email which you you're telling people to do and you don't reply <laughs> and you don't get the products so like what why even bother asking people to pre-order if you're not going to do it and the past two times that that's happened, it's, it's been with the same shop because they are the only one that I know of that goes actually goes to Needlework, Nashville Needlework Market and requests people to email them pre-orders. So I'm just not going to do that again. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. Um, because it's infuriating. Actually infuriating. Um, however, on a more positive note, um, there is a, a UK stitch shop. It's run out of an eBay shop 
and it's Trudy Ann Designs. Now I've seen Trudy Ann at like the store at some stitch festivals, so that I think they've been at a festival of quilts. That's where I've got some like chenille, like um, oh my god, what's the hand dye like trim place? Uh, Lady Dot Creates. She stops Lady Dot Creates, which again is hard to get over here. So I've got stuff from her before at like Festival of Quilts, um, a couple of other stitch and craft shows um, generally held at the NEC in Birmingham. Um, and she posted on her Instagram that they were at Nashville, Needlework Market, and stuff that they've got ready to go when they come back um, is now listed in their eBay shop. And their eBay shop is like Jeff P. Smith something something. Um, I'll link it below for those UK people because they have quite a lot of stock and if you go to the stitching shows um, they have a lot of models on display of the patterns that they stock and a lot of Lady Dot Creates um, thread and tri uh, trims and like um, the velveteen like stuff that you can get anyway so i was just like oh well you know what you're gonna get my business instead because you are reliable <laughs> so um i brought a couple of patterns so one of them is the blue flower i don't know if this is new to last this year but like i brought it anyway um seasons of the heart winter because it's cute and these are definitely uh Natural needlework market and I've never stitched any of these designers patterns before but I saw the one and I was just like this is effing adorable I'm gonna have it um so they are designs by station Stacy Nash and it's the animal cracker series so I got Miss Hazel because that's cute uh Maggie May she's effing adorable and then the reason that I the, the one reason why I got all three of them is Bobbin and it's the cutest little mouth ever and that's a great finish so I got those um oh this is now awake <laughs> I'm cute okay off off thank you um so yeah Next a uh, little bit of I did get a Night Spirit Studio I Love Cross Stitching hoodie uh, which I posted about on Instagram but um that came um so I got a PO box in the States so I get stuff if I'm ordering now if I'm ordering from the States I get it sent to the PO box and it gets consolidated so I only pay one shipping fee. Um which is great so like I can get stuff shipped to my PO box and then I'll get it consolidated and sent to me. So like if there's nothing that I'm urgently awaiting, it um it comes whenever I do it. I think they hold the stuff for like 40 days so yeah. So I I got my Night Spirit Studio uh, I Love Cross Stitching hoodie. Um I also ordered the um ever heard some modern folk in oh, i've gone past talking now modern folk embroidery um valentine's box so, so with that you got the floss uh trims needle minder and love hearts i mean what more what more could you ask for uh, the pattern, like a pattern booklet. Oops. Oh no, that's the information card. Pattern booklet, and then the extras that came with it. Um, and the fabric. So this is porcelain 36 count layer, which is a nice, like, cream. Green. Nice, nice 
kind of fabric. I feel that that's a lot of fabric. Anyway, so I got that. Don't know when I'm going to start it, but like, I'm becoming more of a, after Bendy, um, sorry, after Michelle's Pirate Quake, I was just like, maybe I'm in, and Luna Love, maybe I'm becoming a sample stitcher. Maybe. Um, in my stash, I do have Lila's Studio, Lila's Studio, uh, Halloween Quaker which I've wanted to do but I've never been into samplers or Quakers so maybe maybe I do start that one next I like I think I like yeah I probably could make that one um I've got cramp in my finger um, so yeah, maybe I do. I mean, the Cultify design, all souls via London, is a sample. So maybe I do like modern samplers. So we'll see. Um, and then the last thing that I got, oh, I got loads of fabric from Peakside Needleworks, but you know that just went into stash because they were just base colours. Um, and they had very small cuts of black swan from fox and rabbit which is super annoying because i like to get big cuts because i want to do big designs on them but i can't because you can't get it in big pieces i think the sizes that i got were like fat eights like 13 by 8 or something annoyingly small size piece of fabric <laughs> um it annoys me because there are cross-stitch shops here that sell generic stock that aren't, even when you ask, and I'm just going to say it, it's the same company that I've tried to pre-order from Nashville Needlework Market with and they've just been shipped, so I'm just going to have to find another way to get my <laughs> box of fabric fabric. Um, yeah it's just annoying really annoying um because i love love stitching on fox and rabbit uh linen um anyway enough negativity right um so then the last thing that i got in haul i found this in tk home since tk max or tj max for the americans um their home section here they have it as a separate shop in some places but it's called home sense and it's basically like your tk max for homeware um anyways i was browsing one day and found this incredible cross stitch kit and it's made by hayley pearson cox who also did a similar kit for golden girls patterns so you've probably seen that anyway Barb Ross cross stitch patterns. <laughs> oh, how incredible is that? And it was like nine ninety nine. So it comes with 12, 12 patterns, two pieces of fabric, uh, some floss, embroidery hoop, and the booklet. Anyway, these are all the designs. And I loved it. Um, so yeah, I mean that Bob Ross like portrait is amazing. <laughs> so yeah, got that. Um, so I think that's everything. I'm hoping this isn't too long of a video. I'll cut some bits out because I've rambled here and there. Um, oh, big announcement. <laughs> I reopened my Etsy shop, finally, like almost two years later. Um, it's been on holiday for a while because I had puppy and didn't have time. And Alice is now almost two in June. 
and um, I'm, I feel like she's becoming more chilled and I can get more stuff done. So I've been sewing more, stitching more, which is great. Um, so we're all like finally found like a routine, I guess. Not finally, but like puppies are not easy. <laughs> I'll tell you that now. Um, not that she's a difficult dog or anything like that, but like, it's a, uh, I guess it's, yeah, it's just one of them, isn't it? Um, so I reopened my Etsy shop yesterday and I am selling project bags, like vinyl fronted project bags, zipper pouch bags uh, for your projects. Could be cross stitch, could be knitting. Um, and then smaller versions of the zipper, zipper pouch bags for like notions and stuff like that um, and then I'll also be stocking some grime guards for your Q-snap puppies, Q-snaps um, everything that goes in the shop is ready to ship so what I've been doing is sewing um, getting a bunch ready for uh, reopening the shop yesterday um, I had a few sales yesterday which was great some returning customers which was great um, so yeah, so I have whatever's in the shop is ready to ship. Um, so yeah, go fill your boots, I would say. Um, so um, these are in the shop ready to go. Um, couple, there's a couple of each variety to be fair. Um, Finer print project bags. And they all come with my super duper fun label uh, and a black hologram acrylic heart just to add a bit of personalization and then the zipper pouches um so this is one so this is the extra large one this can fit uh your eight by eight inch q snap or a medium nerge hoop plenty of room it's a box bottom bag, so you've got plenty of room to put stuff in. This is the large one. So it's slightly smaller. You could probably fit a six inch key snap in here or the small um, nerge hoop in here. Again, box bottom bag. Um, they all come with my fancy labels and uh, the black heart acrylic. Um, oh, this is driving me a little bit. Excuse me. No. Um, uh, black acrylic heart zipper pull and then this is the medium one which is I would say it's perfect for like notions and stuff so you can fit like a uh, rotary cutters in here your scissors you could keep your threads and stuff in here it's just a handy little pouch so these are all ready to ship um, and some more uh, are all ready to ship uh, in my Etsy store which I'll link below um so that is that is shop update and i will um i'll keep posted here when i do shop updates so you know when there's new stuff coming in i've got new fabrics that have come in today um so yeah there'll be it should hopefully there'll be stuff going up every few days i would have thought um so yeah so that is that so um, thanks for watching. <laughs> uh, I forgot how you sign these things off. So that's it for me. Let's just say that. Um, Stitch North is in, well, I'm going to Canada, Toronto, in 21 days. Stitch North is in like what, 20, weekend two, is in like 23 days. Um, so if you are going, please come and say hi. Um, cause yeah gonna be fun and I can't wait um, so yeah say hi or let me know if you're going um, I think that's it thanks for watching thanks for subscribing like the video comment if you want to if you want to know any more information about projects comment below I'll go back to you um, subscribe if you will 
that would be greatly appreciated. Um, share if you will, that would be greatly appreciated. Like it, do all the things. Um, I really appreciate it, and I like coming back again. It's been great. So, thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you soon.